Have you ever wanted to do some 3D art environment stuff but didn't know how you can do that transitioning from Blender to Godot? Here's a nice tutorial for you that should be really useful. So if you've been following the previous tutorials, you saw that I did in Blender a terrain shader so you can mix textures together, four of them, using RGB mask layer. This time I am putting all that stuff into a new shader inside Godot. Let's follow along and I'm going to show you how you can make that kind of stuff that we did in Blender in this time inside Godot. This is a diffuse shader that we're going to be building. It's very easy to do and I think that is pretty cool the results we can have using this workflow and this shader combination. And at the end of the video, I'll be doing a time lapse of a small cave. Stuff that I did very lazily to just show you the power you have when you have that kind of workflow stuff from Blender to Godot. And let's just start the video. <laughs> So now let's see how you're going to pass this terrain inside Gideo. So let's see how we're going to export it. So one of the things you're going to need to do is grab the objects you want to export. In this case is the terrain collision, which is the blue mesh one and the normal terrain by itself. So let's go now to file and let's export this as a GLTF. Then you are going to export this inside your good project. So let's go here through a couple of settings that we have. So the first thing is it includes. We want to limit our export of GLTF to select objects only. We do not want anything else to be exported, just the stuff we selected. Next, transform Y up, data, let's go through mesh. So you want UVs, normals, vertex color, not necessarily. We don't need that. Regarding the materials, we are going to build them inside Gudio. So in this case, no exports. We are extensions, lighting, compression. No, we don't need that. Animation. We don't have animation. We don't have shape keys nor skinning. Now, another thing you can change here, the, the format of the GLTF. So we have binary, which is GLB. You have the separate format, which is GLTF plus the textures plus the bin. And you have GLTF embedded, which is .gltf. So I like to use GLB. I think it's more, it's faster. So now you go, you're going to go ahead and export this inside your Godot project. So now that you have exported the mesh, now we need to take care of the materials. So we're going to build the shader inside Godot. So one of the important things is go to shading with the main terrain selected. And you're going to open the shading tab here of our terrain shader. And the important thing is you have to export each of these textures image to Godot so we can actually use them to bake our shader. More specifically, the terrain mask, which is what we painted to make the mask here. So you're going to go on here, image, and you're going to save a copy. And what you want to do is to go ahead and save a copy for each of these images. We are going to use them inside Godot. Go ahead and do that, and then we're going to jump ahead in Godot. So now when you enter Godot, it should try to import everything that you have exported. So if we double click here, you can see we have here the muddy texture, the rock texture, a sand texture, and more importantly, our RGB mask. But we also have here a terrain1.glb. So let's go ahead and see how we are going to make this. So let's add a 3D node scene here to be our world, so our 3D world. And let's drag and drop our terrain1.glb here. So right off the bat, let's see what happens here. So one of the things that are interesting, if you remember the previous tutorial, exported the terrain mesh with a collider. And you can see that the collider already works because this wireframe here is the collider. We can go ahead and do edible children so we can see what it's inside this node. And you can actually see here we have a terrain collision. And if we move that upwards, this is the terrain mesh collision that we made previously. So that blue mesh, we rename it to collision only. And that allowed us to import this guy automatically as a terrain collision mesh. So that is pretty nice. So this terrain should now have a collision stuff that we can use against other nodes. And you can set collision layers, etc. 
So this is pretty good stuff. So let's take care of now about the shader. So let's go ahead and do make local because I just want the mesh for now. So let's drag and drop that backwards and let's delete this. So let's go ahead and assign a material. So you can assign materials to their mesh. You can see here surface zero. So this is a default material. And you can also assign materials on the surface material override and on geometry. This can be very confusing if you don't work with Godot. You can say, wow, there's three ways to apply materials. And that's correct. You have three ways of applying materials. But these options here are regarding the mesh instance 3D. So whenever you change this mesh, the material that is inside is going to change. So what I usually like to do is depending on the type of the terrain you're making, depending on the assets, usually you're safer to use the material variety on the geometry side. So you don't have to worry about losing if you change the mesh for some reason. So let's go ahead and let's create a new shader material. If you click here, you're going to see it's going to open and ask you for to assign a new shader. So we're going to create a new shader for this. And the reason for that is not to use the standard material is because we are going to actually code a new shader. Let's call this Terrain Mixer 1.gd shader. And we want to use spatial and templates. Let's leave a default. And let's do create. So it's going to generate a shader and it's going to save it on the top on the bottom here. So to you edit the shader, you can just double click here. It's going to open the shader editor and it's going to allow you to see your shader file here. So this is something new inside Gideo. Previously, you did not have this menu here that allow you to select the shader. So this is pretty nice. So currently our shader is just like so. So let's go ahead and I'm going to copy here my shader code. So I just pasted the shader here. Let's see what it does. So it's it's a 3D shader, so that's how you give spatial here. Then we have here the source texture for our RGB mask, which is a sample to d That's how you allow it to be displayed. So when you select shader here, you're going to see shader parameters. And these uniforms, the sampler to d we set up, it's going to display here. So we have a for the mask RGB, we have one for the black channel texture, one for the red, green, and blue. And we also have a UV size here, which is going to multiply the texture, which is going to multiply the textures of the terrain, not the mask, by the given value here. So the UV is going to be multiplied and the size is going to be increased or decreased depending on the value you give. And here's the mean value, the max value, and the step value. And here's the default value, so of 1. So let's go through the fragment shader here. So we assign the UV, we create a new variable here called UV scaled, which is our UV, or the UV of the mesh, multiplied by the UV size parameter of the shader here. Then you have the texture, we are going to create a texture for each of the channels and for each of the source textures here. So the important part here that is different is that our texture RGB mask only uses the UV naturally. It does not use the UV scale, which multiplies by UV size. So we have here the texture for RGB mask for the black channel, for the red, green, and blue. And the black channel of the texture is the absence of the mask texture. So if you open the mask texture here, the black portions of the texture, so we have a texture assigned for the black portions, one for the red channel, one for the green channel, and one for the blue channel. And that is how it works. So the summit texture channel. So here we are going to create a new variable that is going to sum each individual channel of the mask. So you need to sum each channel individually. So the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Then next we are going to create a vector tree variable here. That is going to be a clamp, so it's going to clamp the result of this operation here by a mean value and a max value. So that's what the clamp is going to do. It's going to limit the texture values here. And that is how you can get the mixed terrain types. Then next, we are going to finally give the mix to the albedo values. So the diffuse channel of the terrain is going to be a mixture between the mixed terrain, which is the vector tree, 
the black texture then one less the texture channels. So by understanding how this shader works, you have some ideas of how you can apply this in different things. For example, if you wanted to have a metanos mix it in roughness maps, this is only for diffuse, you could do this for each of the channels you need. So say if you wanted to have roughness maps, so currently this mask here is only for diffuse applications. And if you wanted to have a terrain with a roughness or metallic, you probably can do this in different ways, but you can duplicate this code for each of the other ones, like normal, mixing, etc. So that should be about all for the shader here. So now if you grab our shader here, and let's go through the shade parameters here. So on the source texture mask, what you want to do is to hold up our... And, and this is a preview of what the texture looks like. So what you want to do is to hold and grab the mask texture and assign on the source texture mask. So the one you painted with RGB values. Then on the other channels here, you can assign different textures. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like. And this is inside Gideo, which is pretty cool. The shader we did, if you use the UV size, you can see what's happening here. So it's increasing the, the tiling of the textures. So this is great if you don't want to scale the UV size. And this leaves out the mask as well. So we are not scaling the mask, just the other textures here. So it's important that you have seamless textures, otherwise you can see we will have a bunch of seams. And if you increase this too much, it's just like in Blender, you can see the tiling happening. Oh, well, on Blender, I think I did three or four. Okay, I did about that. So as you can see, we have here our terrain that we did on Blender, exactly the way we painted inside Gideo. Now, something quite important that you have to make sure is you can see here how the texture mask is being compressed. And if you want, you can import this texture without that compression. So when you import, here for the import options. So this is regarding texture compression. So this is not a bad thing for textures like these because they have a bunch of details. So when you compress it through VRAM, it's going to cost a lot less VRAM because it's compressed for GPU. But this mask in here, if you want it, you can import it as a lossless format. And this is going to increase the quality of the texture you're going to export in your game, but it's going to cost a little more VRAM to use it. So if you re-import, you can see that the mask here changed uh, quite a bit. And we are more closer to the, the Blender that we did the Blender scene there. So depending on the asset you're using, know the difference from these modes of compression. So for me, on this asset case, I couldn't care less which one is it, but some assets you want to have specific control of the mask here. This allows you to build some terrains. And as you can see here, we have our terrain just to be used inside Gideo. And this will look exactly like the one we did in Blender. So I just added some textures here for us to make more tests. So let's grab our shader. And this is something that I wanted to show you. You can just switch textures here and see the effect it gives on your terrain assets. You can see we can start creating a nice terrain using this technique. And this technique is also useful for making caves. I think you can do a cave system using modular pieces for caves to be connected together and you can make a whole bunch of different assets with this. And it's pretty nice. The only downside of using this as a terrain system for a game world is that each, each mesh is a mesh instance 3D. If you wanted to optimize this a little further, you can go looking into using the GPU-based mesh, which loads a bunch of multiple meshes that is called, yeah, this guy here. So it's a multi-mesh instance 3D. So there's a whole workflow you have to do to use this, but basically this is going to load a bunch of meshes using the GPU. So 
depending on the number of times you want to duplicate a terrain piece, like a cave, like I just talked about a cave system, it might be more performance to use a multi mesh instead of multiple mesh instances. Because when you duplicate mesh instances, you're going to be increasing the workload for the CPU, or what we usually call ref counted. So you're going to increase the ref counted for each of the terrain. But that is a talk for another video. For now, you should have a nice system to work to get your terrain pieces as you want. But wait, the video is not finished yet. What I have here for you is a time lapse for me making a cave. So this is just me taking into account everything that we talked about in this small series that I did. And here I just modeling a 3D cave. So I want to show you guys what's possible to do with this type of system. So as you can see here, it's pretty easy to model a cave using Blender. And this technique will remind you of modeling stuff like, like making scenarios for Fallout or Skyrim. You can see that they use almost similar techniques like clipping geometry one another to make their 3D worlds. So on this time lapse here, I am just making the, the mask RGB layers so we can paint it up. So one of the things that I noticed is depending on type of assets, you want to split them into small parts. So this is just a demo of the shaders that what is possible to achieve with the shader, I would say like that. But the UV here, you can see is not the best in the world and that's going to give some issues. So you can see that the UV painting layer here is bleeding all over the RGB pixels. So that's not a big issue for caves because caves are more organic so we don't need precise control but depending on the control you want to have this type of bleeding over the pixels is not ideal so my solution would be for you to try other uv techniques maybe do a manual uv technique like you put and split the edges you make uv maps that are a lot a lot more cool Something else I want to talk on this time lapse is that I do not simplify the geometry of the cave. So if you watch the previous tutorials, I teach a method to use modifiers to simplify the geometry, which is a must if you want to do art for video games, because this is okay if you want to just leave it at Blender. But for video games, you need low poly stuff. So you have to do that step. So in this case, I did not do it, but it was just a demonstration. So you can see here I am just making a copy of the material and I am adding the second texture with the RGB mask and you can see already the material it has. And here I just switching the textures to see what looks the best. And here is some, it's just an experiment and you can see a, a lot of different assets we can create with this. So I am pretty happy with, uh, with this tutorial series, with this that I've tested I think it's a nice workflow to have to make assets and especially this kind of stuff usually is a lot harder to do for video games so you can see that already this looks a lot nice and this almost looks like it could be inside a game now so you can see that this technique is pretty useful and here I just duplicated the cave increase its scale and just added some environment effects like volumetric add some couple of lights so this already starts to look pretty good and this is pretty lazy stuff I did just to demonstrate the concept to see how powerful and useful this is. As you can see, the final result is here and it looks pretty darn good. And do your own stuff man is not that hard. That's my encouragement at the end of the video. And that is all I have for this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.